since Andrew Luck retired prior to the 2019 season, it's really been a revolving door of washed up older quarterbacks. If, if you, if you want to go back, Jacoby Brissett, Brian Hoyer, Phillip Rivers, Carson Wentz, and then last year, the trio of Matt Ryan, Sam Ellinger, and Nick Foles. I mean, look, again, as a Viking fan, I've seen bad quarterback play. I've kind of had this, uh, we've had this era where we were bringing in older quarterbacks for a little while. It doesn't, it usually doesn't work. Every once in a while, you get a Brett Favre type of season. Philip Rivers was good. I mean, that team went to the playoffs. But finally, Jim Irsay was like, enough's enough. We're hitting the reset button. Shane Sykin comes in from the Eagles. Remember, he's had a lot of success with Justin Herbert and Jalen Hurts. We saw their transformation to stardom really happen with him. And then they go and they draft Anthony Richardson with the fourth overall pick, hoping that Steichen can rekindle some of that old magic he had. Uh, the question is around Anthony Richardson, will he live up to that potential? And it's, it's, tough, to, it's tough to answer right now because the biggest, we talked about this a lot before, but the biggest issue for him in a lot of people's eyes, I'm not sure, I'm not sure where you stand on this anymore, Ziggy, but accuracy is always a thing that's brought up with Anthony Richardson. 54.7% over his college career, uh, 53.8% in his senior season. And people will say, oh, but there's so many drop passes. And that's true. There were drop passes. That's why we shared those on target rates and those stats in a video uh, from a couple months ago. 106 out of 114 FBS quarterbacks in on target rate, 95th out of 114 FBS quarterbacks in catchable rate. Like accuracy issues are a concern, but if he's able to fix those, which we saw, we've seen with guys like Lamar and Josh Allen, all of a sudden now we're talking about superstar potential. What do you think here about Anthony Richardson? I think that Anthony Richardson has a very high floor, at least coming into this season, for the following reason. I get that there are passing concerns, and the concerns are somewhat justified. I think he'll improve the accuracy pretty quickly. We'll see whether or not he does. But he will be one of the best rushing quarterbacks in the NFL from day one. Yep. The only guys who can compete with him are Lamar Jackson and Justin Fields, right? So when you talk about a guy who's a genuine, like, master architect of offenses in Shane Steichen, right, a team that should have an offensive line that improves next year, a team with functional wide receivers, right, Michael Pittman Jr., one of the most underrated receivers in the NFL, an elite running back, solid tight ends, and Mo Alley-Cox and Virginia grad Jelani Woods. He's going to shock the league next year. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, think, I feel like you're being a little generous with Okay, look, positions. I'm a little generous on Jelani Woods. Okay, I admit, I watched him, and I've never seen a player quite like him. But set that aside. Yeah, we're going to have to. There's a lot to <laughs> like about this. There's a, there's a fair amount to like about the Colts' offense if you can get a quarterback that's a rushing threat. Right, Matt Ryan had to stand back in the pocket and get pelted over and over again. Oh, I mean, if Richardson's saw, not, yeah. yeah, if Richardson's not ready, you can start Gardner Minshew. Yeah, we you know saw, can step in and win games. You saw Carson Wentz and Matt Ryan just getting murdered for the past couple of seasons, and now it'll be a lot of fun watching Anthony Richardson and Jonathan Taylor because there's going to be growing pains when it comes to the passing game in Indianapolis. Like, re- regardless whether that's from Richardson's issues, inaccuracy, footwork, whatever it might be for him. Or I actually think you're giving their skill positions a little too much credit outside of Pittman. I mean, I don't know. Alec Pierce is rather unproven in the league. Josh Downs, you're hoping he could come in. Like, there's exciting players, but there aren't really guys that I look at and go, oh, you know, thank God Anthony Richardson has Alec Pierce to throw the ball to. Um, it's but, a better situation than a lot of the rookie quarter. Oh, yeah. I mean, but compared it's, to CJ it's Stroud, not great. we'll get to the Texans in a second. But compared to Stroud, you'd much rather see the talent around uh, Richardson, like that offensive line, as bad as they were last year, they, sh- everyone is expecting them to rebound. Quentin Nelson allowed four sacks in his first four seasons. And I believe he allowed five last year. So he, like he had a very off year for what many people think is the best offensive lineman in the national football league. If that line can get back to where they're normally playing all of a sudden, this Colts offense could be fun to watch defensively. Now, and there are, I mean, there are a lot more issues here. We're starting to, we're starting to really get into the, the deep end of the AFC South here. Um, they're led by DeForest Buckner and Shaq Leonard. When Shaq Leonard plays, he missed a lot of last season. But, I mean, this guy is total game changer. Uh, remember, remember his rookie year. I mean, 2021, 91.1 run defense grade, seven forced fumbles, four interceptions. I mean, he's one of the best in the, in the business when he's healthy. But then, again, as you move back, the D-line and linebackers are okay. The secondary, Stephon Gilmore's gone. 
Isaiah Rogers is suspended for gambling. Another another gambling guy who uh, who got caught. So we're, we see Julius Brents, their second round pick, as arguably their number one corner. Kenny Moore, the second, and Darius Rush, a fifth round pick. Like, I mean, this this could be a big problems in the secondary. No, now I will say there are there's maybe no organization in the NFL except maybe the Patriots that's done a better job identifying cornerbacks and developing them than the Colts. They consistently have good players coming through that position that they draft and develop. So I'm not too worried there. I think it won't be great next year, but this isn't a team with huge expectations next year. I think into the future they'll be okay. I worry about defensive end most of all, actually. Interesting. DeForest Buckner is great on the inside, but their starting defensive ends are going to be Quiddy Pay and Samson Abuka. Yeah, it's not exactly ideal. <laughs> no, if, if Quiddy Pay needs to take a huge step forward. He had a very disappointing year last year. And then you're talking about like a, Ram, a Rams retread and like Khalid Kareem, right? Mm-hmm. Not not a particularly exciting defensive line. You know, Justin Blackmon's good. Shaq Leonard's good. Zaire Franklin underrated. But I actually yeah, like the, the decision. Of, the linebackers are good. Yeah, I like the decision of the Colts to keep continuity with Gus Bradley from last year. Mm-hmm. The defense wasn't good, but I felt like they did a very good job given the talent that Bradley had to work with. I know some Colts fans wanted Bradley's head because it wasn't quite the performance they're used to. But I think with this Colts team, next year will not be their year. Right, They'll have a four from Richardson running the ball, but they're not going to be a particularly thrilling team to watch in terms of winning games. Yes. What Colts fans should be looking for is development, cornerback development, quarterback development, offensive line returning to normal. And as long as those targets keep getting hit, it'll be a successful season. And you Colts know what? fans should be looking to 24 or 25. You're totally right. And, and there will be weeks. When Richardson, if he's on passing the ball, like when, when everything comes together and there will be games like that, they'll look great. And everyone who's saying that there are question marks like, will look foolish, but there are likely to be more games next year where we're you know taking a step back and saying, all right, there's a lot of development that still needs to happen with the Colts. But when it's all clicking, I mean, it's going to be fun to watch Anthony Richardson. There's not, there's not many guys that you'd rather have on your team as, as a young quarterback in terms of the potential he has. Like, Again, that's why he went fourth overall. Any closing thoughts on Indianapolis? You know, I wouldn't expect a lot from Anthony Richardson last year. I'd expect a, something a lot like Lamar Jackson's rookie season, where maybe he'll start the whole year, maybe he won't. We'll see if Ursay has some meddling in that. But even though the Ravens won a lot of games in Lamar Jackson's rookie season, he was completing like 55% of his passes. The rushing was good, right? He was putting up like, I think he averaged... 80 or 90 yards a game as rookie season, Mm -hmm. something crazy rushing, but that's Richardson's going to be ugly next year. You just want (laughs) to see consistent signs of improvement. And if they hit hit that, I mean, when was the last time Colts fans could have looked to the future and think, all right, even if we're bad this year, next year could be a lot better. It It hasn't hasn't happened since Andrew Luck Luck. left. It wasn't the Jacoby years. It wasn't the Rivers years. It wasn't the Wentz years. It sure wasn't the Matt Ryan year. God, last year was bad for them. 